solutions that we're seeing in, in the Middle East. Well, clearly, if fossil fuels are going away, if prices are going up, we will need to identify and bring on alternative sources of energy. That means we're going to have to start evaluating those alternatives before we invest enormous amounts of capital. This is a huge project. It's going to take trillions of dollars and decades of work to replace fossil fuels. So what alternative energy sources shall we invest in? Well, it turns out that it, it requires a number of criteria to evaluate energy sources. One of the important ones is energy return on the energy that we invest in getting that energy. It takes energy to drill oil wells. It takes energy to build solar panels and wind turbines. So how much energy does it take to do that versus how much we get at the end of the day? Well, it turns out that fossil fuels historically have had a very high energy return on energy investment. And that's been perhaps their greatest economic boon because I imagine the world as it was a couple of centuries ago where our main sources of energy were from the sun. We were collecting secondhand sunlight via wood and agricultural produce and feeding uh, draft animals and then using their muscle power and so on. Most of us had to work at producing energy in those days. In the US, I think the statistic is something like 80 to 85% of the population were engaged in agriculture in some way. In order to support the other 15 or 20% of the population who were politicians and soldiers and accountants and newspaper reporters and all the other things that, that we know how to do these days. Well, as energy return on an energy investment declines, that means more and more of the total resources of society have to be invested in energy production, and less and less energy is available to support all the other kinds of things that we want to do. Uh, the other sources of energy that we're going to be counting on generally have much lower levels of energy return or net energy. Uh, some of them are relatively good. Uh, wind, for example, up in the range of 18 to 1, quite acceptable. But then there are other criteria that we have to take into account. Uh, is, it, is that energy source something that we can count on 24-7, 365 days per year? Or is it variable? as wind and solar are? What's the size of the resource? What's the infrastructure required? What's the convenience of use? Oil, for example, extremely convenient. We can, we can transport it through hoses and in tanks. Imagine if you had to run your car on firewood. Not very convenient. Uh, the environmental impact. All energy sources have environmental impacts. There are environmental impacts from building solar panels, for example. Is it renewable? Is it scalable? Now, once you take all of these criteria and more, I've simplified this, obviously, given the time we have, uh, what, what's the outcome? Well, we did a study at Post Carbon Institute about 18 months ago, which is published on our website. You can find it as a free PDF download. It's, it's titled Searching for a Miracle. And we, we looked at 18 different energy sources and evaluated them by 10 criteria. And our conclusion was that there's no credible scenario in which alternative energy sources can fully make up for fossil fuels as the latter go into decline. I know that's, that is a controversial conclusion because there have been many other studies that have said, oh, we can easily make up for fossil fuels with alternative energy sources. But what we found was that those other studies failed to take into account one or more of these important criteria. Now, it's not only fossil fuels, of course, that are depleting. We're also seeing other materials that are becoming more scarce and expensive with time. And disturbingly, some of those other materials are the very things we need 
for building renewable energy technologies, things like rare earth elements, which are used to make the, the magnets in uh, wind turbines, or uh, indium and gallium, which are used in making some of the more sophisticated coatings in new photovoltaic panels. We're also drawing down on natural capital. The, the other species of the world are going extinct at extraordinary rates. Well, what does this have to do with economic growth? Well, we depend on these other species for providing ecosystem services. Little things like pollination of our food plants. Much of that destruction of other species is happening, of course, because the climate is changing. We're performing this enormous experiment with the Earth's atmosphere, and no one knows exactly how that's going to turn out, but it doesn't look good. Now, when I put forward the, the thesis that world economic growth is virtually at its end, naturally all sorts of objections come to mind. Well, what about China? China's still growing at 10% per year, right? Uh, well, I'd refer you to a, uh, an article that uh, uh, my colleague David Fridley and I wrote in uh, Nature last November 18th, which talks about China's relationship with coal. Uh, coal is 70% of China's total energy, 80% of its electricity. China's using 3 billion tons of coal per year, three times as much as the US is now beginning to import coal. The entire world coal export trade is only about 630 million tons per year. Cut to the chase, no one knows where the coal is going to come for, con for China conti to continue growing its economy. And while China is rapidly developing alternative sources of energy, including nuclear and wind and solar and so on, the reality is that China will not be able to develop these energy sources fast enough to continue growth as soon as it stops being able to grow its, uh, its coal consumption. And this is probably likely to happen within this decade. Uh, what about energy efficiency? Absolutely, we need more energy efficiency. Very good thing. Will energy efficiency by itself enable the economy to keep growing? I don't think so. Or substitution. These are things that we need to be investing in, finding substitutes for fossil fuels and increasing energy efficiency through innovation. All of these things we have been relying on for the last 100 years to create economic growth, but they've ridden on top of increasing energy supplies, almost entirely from fossil fuels. Many of these will be important for the process of adaptation to a world in which we have less energy and more